Hello, folks, and welcome back to Chris Wyatt Reports. Well, what's the latest? The latest is 231 to 131 with a single abstention. What am I talking about? The vote of no confidence or motion to no confidence, as they say in the vernacular of South Africa's parliament, put forward by the opposition Democratic Alliance to unseat the feckless, useless cabinet of President Cyril Ramaphosa. This unprecedented move resulted in a motion no confidence vote today after a long debate, a somewhat comical debate at times, 231 votes not to remove the cabinet, 131 to remove it with one abstention. The African National Congress, the Nkata Freedom Party, the Good Party, Patricia Lille, the NFP, the AIC, and Al Jamal voted against the motion, while the DA, the EFF, Freedom Front Plus, the ACDP, the UDM, and ATM supported it. But what are the other 37 members of parliament? There's 400 seats in the National Assembly. Had all the votes from the Democratic Alliance, EFF, and the Freedom Front Plus, plus the ACDP, and the ATM been cast, to remove, the total would have been 146 votes of no confidence. Now, this comes far short of the 201 votes necessary to remove the cabinet. South Africa's motion no confidence requires simply 201 of 400 votes to remove members, and that didn't happen. Now, this isn't the first time there's been a motion no confidence in this government's history. Of course, there was famously an effort to unseat Jacob Zuma with nine efforts to have votes of no confidence. He survived the most dangerous and closest one, 197 votes to remove him, four short of removing Jacob Zuma from office. Now, this was the first time that such a motion was heard to remove the cabinet, and it's also the first time they made use of the roll call voting system, and it was chaos. Total and utter chaos. Listening to jackals and clowns jump in on their Zoom session and interfere with the voting. People refusing to take their mask off. People refusing to put their mask on. People refusing to turn their cameras on. It took what seemed like forever to do this motion. What's really disturbing about this is listening to the members of the African National Congress when their vote was called. Not only are they simply say no, but the venomous, condescending, total disdain for South African voters. And the responses from these Latuli House loyalists was nauseating, to say the least. No, I say super no, double no, triple dirty, dirty, dirty no. The lies told by the Democratic Alliance. Only the Democratic Alliance's argument wasn't full of lies. Speaker Nosazivwe Mapisi Nkola referred to another motion by the African Transformation Movement um, to the Programming Committee on Thursday. So that gets delayed till tomorrow. That was the no-confidence vote on Cyril Ramaphosa. So that didn't occur today. Now, on their, for their part, the Nkata Freedom Party, Chief Whip Naran Sang, said the cabinet success or failure was also the present success or failure. Okay. So Sang said that they would not be supporting the motion as they were giving Ramaphosa the benefit of the doubt to appoint the right people to the cabinet. Right people to the cabinet? Like, say, in Kozazanami Dali Mzuma, who was drummed out of Addis Ababa, the least popular person in Ethiopia. Or Bekatsili, the gangster-in-chief, who is run ruinous over policing and law enforcement in South Africa. Or perhaps Fikile Mabalula, the incompetent transport minister who claims he's in the Ukraine if he's not on his way to the moon. Or perhaps maybe it's the failed defense minister who's now the Speaker of the House. The Speaker of Parliament, who couldn't get the job done as Defense Minister. Perhaps it's Dr. Zuelim Kizi, the fraud from the Digital Vibe scandal. So the Inkata Freedom Party has sided with the party of criminals. And this is disappointing, to say the least. Now, Good Party, this is the uh, ego vein trip of Patricia DeLille. Good Party MP Brett Heron went off on a non sequitur that was not germane whining about the party that he once betrayed with idiotic moral equivalency, crying that MECs, that's the provincial legislature, in the Western Cape had more permissions than cabinet mem members. The hypocrisy is astounding, said Brett Heron. No, his deflection and his deflecting is what's hypocrisy. Brett Heron, what is going on in the Western Cape provincial government is not germane to this vote of no confidence against corrupt, venal, incompetent, thieving members of the cabinet. This is a vote against members of the cabinet, not against the Democratic Alliance. If you want to complain about the Democratic Alliance, then do so in the provincial legislature. Then do so in a form where it's appropriate. Sitting out there wasting people's time whining about the Democratic Alliance is not only shameful, it's just stupid, Brett Heron. 
deputy chief whip for the Democratic Alliance, which brought the motion, Siviwe Garube said South Africans remembered clearly that those who played leading roles in state capture, in the looting of COVID-19 funds, and those who failed to protect them during the July riots. Quote, these are irredeemable people whose presence in our executive can no longer be justified. My plea today is that you vote to bring in capable ministers who will work hard to pull South Africans out of poverty who will be unapologetic about choosing policies that will grow our economy and create jobs, and ministers who will care about the future of this country. That's what she had to say. Bravo. Bravo. Her and Leon Schreiber said the most cogent things in this conversation. Now, the motion of no confidence around proposal that was tabled by the ATM because they wanted that secret ballot. ANC Member of Parliament Zola Nkola said it was disgraceful to say that ministers were disgraced and there was no evidence to suggest that any member of the cabinet contravened their oath of office. Now, he said the motion was a cheap, divisive attempt to divide the president from his cabinet. Only, it's not. Look no further than Speaker of the House who used South African Air Force planes for personal privilege. Or Drs. Waylon Kesey, who stole in the digital vibe scandal yet still sits in Parliament with no criminal charges pending against him. And the list of reprobates and criminals who stole COVID funds, PPE equipment, and many other heinous crimes is too numerous to enumerate in the cabinet alone. Now, had these motions passed, all cabinet members led by the ruling African National Congress, excluding the president, would have been dismissed. They would have been out of office. And that would have been a good thing for South Africans. The likes of Beckett Sealy, gone. Fikili Mabula, gone. Nkozizani Midalizuma, gone. Joe Pala, gone. These are people that are just a pack of thieves. And they're power-hungry, egotistical, self-obsessed narcissists with their blue light escorts and their expensive cars, caring very little for the fact that children have starved to death in the Eastern Cape in Nelson Mandela Bay because the government-controlled entity sent 67 million rand back to the central government that they couldn't disperse while children in need of food starve to death with acute hunger and starvation. And you see no need to remove this cabinet? I have to say that the most disappointing result in this was that of the Nkata Freedom Party, which proved that they don't care about South Africans, they care about privilege as well. And now that they sense a little blood in the water, they'll team up with the ANC anytime they have to just to get office so they can have their fair share of the spoils. Unfair, perhaps, but the argument that Mr. Sang made for supporting the ANC makes no sense whatsoever. No sense whatsoever. The IFP, a major disappointment. Now, their 14 votes would have had no impact here. The bottom line is this, this referendum, this motion of no confidence was doomed to fail from the outset. Why? because of the ludicrous notion by the failed defense minister, now Speaker of the National Assembly, the ludicrous notion that there was no justification for this to be a secret ballot. No sezivwe, mapisa, and kola's ludicrous comment that there was no justification for this to be a secret ballot is beyond the pale. She has a clear conflict of interest and should have no say in this being a secret ballot because her privilege, her position, is entirely contingent on the good graces of the Tully House. You see, folks, in South Africa, the people don't elect members of parliament or the president. The people vote for a political party, and that party picks the representative in parliament, and it picks the positions, and it picks the ministers with no say from the public whatsoever, as well as the president. Nobody voted for Nelson Mandela to be president. Nobody voted for Cyril Ramaphosa to be president. They save members of the National Assembly. And there you have it. You have no recourse to remove these corrupt, criminal, and incompetent reprobates from office, save a motion of confidence. And as long as it's an open ballot in which members of the ANC cannot take the risk of being seen as voting their conscience to remove these criminals and these incompetent fools like Beckett Sealing from office, they will kowtow and make sure that the ANC sees them when they say, no, double no to the DA's lies. So they stand the good graces of the party that puts them in this position of privilege with a huge salary, a blue light escort, and fame and elite status. And that's the bottom line. Doomed to failure because it wasn't an appropriate secret ballot. It's just a sham. So a lot of people ask, why did the Democratic Alliance even bring this motion? Because it's long overdue. It should have been brought in August of 2020 after the scam that the ANC ran against the population for months. 
threatening to lock the country down to arrest people and arresting people who were in minority neighborhoods while allowing people in the townships to run around and do what they wanted with no intervention after the security services murdered 11 or 12 black South Africans and the negative press they got for killing Collins Costa and others. They pulled out of the townships and let those people do what they wanted, spreading germs all over the place, but arresting mothers for nursing their children on a sidewalk in Cape Town, harassing foreign tourists for sitting on a beach in which no one's within 100 meters of them except for the annoying Becca Chile who walks up to them. Hypocrites, frauds, this should have occurred in August of 2020. Not in March of 2022. Dollar late and a dollar short. But better late than never. And it wasn't an exercise in vain. This is the first time it's ever happened. And this precedent will mean it will happen again at some point to remove a corrupt, incompetent cabinet. Folks, that's it. If you're not a subscriber, smash the button right down there. Thanks for helping out. Appreciate your support for the channel. Cheers.